Hi guys, this is Shujin. Um, long time no see. I feel like it's been forever. I last recorded official an official YouTube video. Um, I actually thought about it just a second ago. I was thinking whether I should post it today or tomorrow. But then I was like, okay, well, I already said it in my shorts today. I talked about in failure about failure in my shorts and I said I will have to talk about it later tonight so okay well I have to so I'm here in front of camera and I am recording shooting a video um so um so mainly all my content 90% 95% will be my mentor's line of thought and knowledge and experience and insight um, because I know nothing and I'm not shamed of it. I am not embarrassed about it. That's just a fact and that's just the truth. I'm not somebody who's trying to elaborate things and make it sound like mine when it's not. Everything that I say is going to be from the words of my mentor. And now, by now, you're going to be curious, who's her mentor? Who is she talking about? Um, my mentor, his name is Ice Kang, and he's teaching sales training, business marketing, and he's a business coach, as you can tell. And he's teaching um, and training people to be successful in their life and make money. But making money is sort of a last result of having the people change their life. Um, and I'm so, so grateful that I met my mentor. Not physically met him yet, but I'm sure I will meet him someday. Um, no doubt. Um, and also... Um, I'm part of his online classes. That's why I was able to take part of his classes, even though I'm in the States and he's in Korea. Um, seriously, I think my life is at the starting point where my life will change completely. And it's all thanks to him. Um, my parents would have not been able to done it for me. My so-called friends around me cannot do it for me um, my neighbors cannot do it for me my co-workers cannot do it for me myself was not able to do it for me the change for myself nobody was able to help me all this time and i was so confused with what i want in my life and how i would shape my life and how i want to lead my life um, deep in my heart, I wanted to be different from the people around me. And I was not satisfied. I was not content with myself. I was not happy. But then I was slowly hypnotized by all the things around me, all the people influenced around me, that they say everything is okay. That's how the life is. That's all the time vibe that I got from the people around me. So toxic, I know. And I couldn't even say that they're bad because it's as if like I'm putting myself so special out of them and I'm going to be the loser. But I mean like I'm going to be the outsider of everybody but nobody says anything. They want to include me but I'm the one who's putting them away and pushing them away. It's like that. Do you know what I mean? So it was really hard. Yeah. Anyways, that's why I'm so thankful for my mentor. And my mentor was the first person, first figure for me, who did not physically really told me so but i felt like she he's telling me that it's okay um what you're thinking there's a way to it 
and there's many other people who are working their ass off and they're working so hard in the similar mindset, in the similar way that you're thinking. And you're just a beginner, so you have to learn. And I was so comforted. He did not physically said it to me. It's just a feeling that I got from his courses as I was taking his courses. So anyways, long intro, but I just wanted to say, it's like five minutes intro. I just wanted to say so much that I'm so thankful for having my mentor in my life, my mentor, Aizkang. And by any mean, these are all from my mentor's insights, not from me. And that's it. Yeah. And I know nothing and I'm not embarrassed about it and I'm not shamed about it actually I'm so proud of myself that I posted I don't intend to delete any of my videos from the past ever because that's my proud progress then until now from the first very first video that I shot it in YouTube and now what 154 155th now on this one <sighs> From that time and on, how I progressed, it's not an overnight thing. And it's literally a progress. I'm so proud of myself for it. So, and that's me. Past was me and now is me also. And future will be me also. So there's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be... Even if that past me was a dumb S, you know? <laughs> yeah, that was me also. So, yeah, anyways, yeah, so that's just so you know, everything is from my mentor, it's insights. And I was thinking of, I was actually looking at my notes. Um, I was thinking of maybe I should, I don't know, I should organize the thoughts better and put them under different themes or topics or subject or something like that. But then... I just like, oh, wow, this is going to be a whole another thing. If I was going to think about all those things and organize, it's going to, I don't want to start anything, you know. So I'm just going to go over my notes Um, if that's okay with you. Actually, if that's not okay with you, you can leave. <laughs> Even if it's not okay with you, I will still do it. <laughs> Anyways, let me get on back. Um, let me get back to it. That's what I was going to say. Um, anyways, uh, lately I've been watching a lot of my mentors' YouTube videos. Um, and I couldn't take so many notes down, but I wrote down some. Also, before I start, I did read my mentor's book. This is my mentor's book, by the way. It's about TM marketing. So it's it's about cold call. But actually, it's not just about cold call. So him being a business coach, not about cold call. It's just a piece of something that he's talking about cold call. It's an important piece, but it's not just about cold call that he's teaching. Anyways, this is his book. It's in Korean. And this is him. I read a little bit. Actually, I'm not a fast reader. I haven't had a reading habit for a long time since I last read was Harry Potter. Um, and then The End of Green Gables. Those are my favorite books. I like those type of fantasy. Um, I was very picky eater. And I'm uh, not picky eater. I was a very picky reader. <laughs> And I was not a good reader also. So ever since then, I just didn't read the book. Not the book. I just didn't read books. Um, so and anyways, I'm not a fast reader. I only read how much. Like I only read... Even my mentor's book, I only read this much. This much is how much I read. Like I'm on like, I'm on, like 25 page. Page 25. Um... And I like to, maybe I'm a slow thinker also, but I like to think deep. And I, I want to take a moment and think about what this is saying. 
especially 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 <laughs> especially when um this type of book like his book is not a skim through book you have to you have to think about what this is implying um if you skim through you can but there's not much you can get out of it if you just skim through you have to read and really think about and revisit the thought behind it and analyze yourself put yourself in it and think about yeah if that makes sense wow it's already 10 minutes i'm gonna go let it quickly anyways yeah so actually let's talk about the books first yeah as you can see my line of thoughts is everywhere just bear with me so first i'm gonna talk about the books that i'm reading recently and then i'm gonna get into my notes is that better yeah if it's not better you're still ha you still are you still there with me you still have to bear with me sorry <laughs> anyways so i started reading my mentor's book actually i only read a little bit like i said i'm on page 25 um he talked about how to get rid of fear um and he said you have to do something that you're feared of you're afraid of for five seconds um he said when he did not do cold call he did five seconds of cold shower and released the guiltiness uh feeling um to be honest I don't know if I have to do cold shower, but I was thinking why he's writing about this, why he's talking about here. The meaning behind it is that um, you have to... Because nobody wants to take cold shower, right? It's something that you don't like to do. So you have to do, you cannot just, even though you're feared of something, you cannot just sit and do nothing. You have to do something that you don't like to break off that fear feeling. I think that's why he's talking about the cold shower. It's an example. It's just an example. Obviously, he's, he's not saying that you have to take cold shower. It's just an example. You know what I mean? So you have to go really deep in the meaning don't just skim through um especially this type of book if they're sharing about their experience or yeah anyway so i think it's better to be slow yeah so if you're feared of doing something and you're really you haven't started it because of that reason then you have to find something that you can break off that fear and give yourself confidence or trust that you can also break off the other fearfulness that you haven't done you know what i mean yeah so anyways that's where i left off i haven't finished it obviously this is only like this much um yeah this much so that's a book actually i was reading anti-fragile i've had book review about this book for a while also and I stopped reading it, to be honest. That's, to tell you the truth, that's my honest, <laughs> honest um, story behind it. I, I, I've been reading it, but I was slacking off because this book was too, way too difficult for me. I couldn't understand a lot. So I just stopped. But then I got back on track because my mentor, as I was going through his classes on YouTube, um, um, his, um, he was saying that, reading is very important so okay i was like okay well i have to give it a shot and i i, I will it's like i remember this time when he said showing up is the most important thing um even though it doesn't it doesn't matter even if i don't understand a thing i have to get i have to get myself used to this environment called book so or the language in this book so i just started reading and i'm actually surprisingly on page 135 
but that doesn't mean that I understand very well. <laughs> um, but because I was not able to understand it very well, I read it out loud. Every time I read this book, I read aloud. I don't just read it with my eyes. I read it aloud. It helps me a little bit. So I'm on chapter 8. That's where I have to start tomorrow. I just finished chapter 7 today. Mm. Anyways, I read this much. But this book is very big. So I was like, okay, there's no way I'm going to finish it any soon. But I'm getting bored. This is like, I try, but... There's not a lot that I can understand, so I'm getting bored. Wow, it's already 15 minutes. Okay. So I started another book. I thought, I was like, it's okay. I will start another book. So I, I started this one. Um, He only talked about like once or once, maybe, one of his YouTube videos that he read it. Um, probably. And I was like, okay. And then he actually talks about Trump quite often so i thought i should give this a try so i bought it what is it the art of the deal trump actually i just started today so only a few pages mm, it's not that hard compared to this one so it's much easier to read so i'll keep reading it if i have any insights i'll leave it in my youtube Anyways, those are my book reviews for the day. Um, okay, before it gets too long, let me get back to our notes. Or my notes, not yours. So not our, mine. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay, so I wrote down, when you're working with somebody and micromanage, then it is not going to work. It is at the level of cooperation. Okay, so when you're working with someone, um, micromanaging is not a way to go um, because if you're working with someone it's at the level of cooperation not micromanaging and top down unless you're like in the relationship of employer and employee but I think even with employer and employee micromanaging is not a way um, because I myself is experienced experiencing it right now and experience have been experiencing it and i see many problems coming from it somehow i managed it down and my employer is also helping herself be a better employer so we both are making changes so it's getting better so i don't complain about it anymore um meaning like i don't complain about it um to myself anymore yeah anyways okay let's move on reaction is better than no reaction um reaction is better than no reaction yeah so he actually talked about it like reaction is better than no reaction meaning like um for example his class um because he he believes that the change needs to happen when you are part of a curriculum or a program then you have to have change as a result um whether it's money whether it's changing yourself then should there should be a progress and change um but so that's when he talked about reaction is better than no reaction because a lot of curriculums that out there um, they, people can part, take part of it, but they never have a change as a result. It's like no reaction. Those type of curriculums are not good, right? Because it doesn't make you have a, doesn't result you have a change. So that's what I wrote down. Reaction is better than no reaction. But then I was thinking, I was twisting it also. I was thinking that... Mm. Actually, I will not twist it. <laughs> I'll take it as it is. In the intention of my mentor. 
Okay. Um, if you're bottom rock poor, you're not in the state to help others poor. You have to get middle class client quality clients. It's like this. It's very realistic thing to say. If you are per se, if you are like bottom rock poor, and you're trying to help another poor, it's not gonna work because you have to help yourself first. You know what I mean? And you have to help. Um, if you were to get a client, then your target should be middle class or quality clients who can help you, not a poor client. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's why I wrote down. And then the more you know, the more you think you don't know. So the more, this is what my mentor said, billionaires, millionaires, or billionaires, uh, or trillionaires, I don't know if they have trillionaires. Anyways, billionaires, the more you know, the more you would think that you don't know. Because there are so many things that you don't know you realize. And I wrote down, my motivation comes from my anger that I didn't know. I wasted my time now. I don't want to waste my time anymore. Um, I feel... I, I got comfort from my mentor saying that I, I felt like I don't know exactly if he said it exactly like this but I, I felt like when my mentor was saying something about motivation I felt like oh it's okay to have motivation from your anger um, um, because anger is like negative right so um i i'm afraid it sounds like it's not a good thing but um i got comfort that it's okay um when you're angry you want to do better um that's a motivation at least for me reflecting on my own experience um Um, and also, yeah, anyways, let's not go deep in it. Um, and I said, don't give the value to somebody who would not understand. This, I cannot agree any better. And I'm, I'm so grateful that my mentor said this, um, emphasized this. And I, I felt a great comfort when he said it. And I, I felt like this is exactly what i've been doing the other way i was giving the value to somebody who would not understand hoping that they would understand what i mean hoping that they would understand the value of who i am and the value of what i say or act but they would never understand <laughs> they would never understand um because like i said people have the perception of you people have the image of you they created from the old relationship they first have the relationship with you and them and they already have the set image it's hard for them to change the image of you they will always go back that to that image um that's why when you start something um and when you start something or eat, like do sales or eat, just not not just sales but like start something you should not go to them you should go to new people because they don't have the old image of you and they will take you as who you are how you've changed you know what i mean it's very important sadly even my parents my parents mom and dad they love me dearly on the earth they're probably the only ones who love me however they also don't see the value in me don't you think that's very ironic but it is really they cannot see it they cannot see the value in me they're so trapped in their image of me um how they see it is the law but it is not you know what i mean so you really have to be clever about it and smart about it and just be really realistic and understand that people will not see the value in you so don't give the value to 
people who would not understand, even if that's your parents, even if that's your close friends, so called. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I, this was so powerful to me, and it really eliminated a lot of distractions from me because of that. I cut out most wasteful time with hanging out with the people that. In the end, I I I have a uh, empty feeling after hanging out with them. Like there's nothing meaningful coming out of it. Um, because who I've changed, who I've become. Um, I know from my heart those are meaningless and waste of time. Then I'd rather just be alone and do things on my own and work on myself. They will say. The more I share my life with them, they will say your life is so boring, and they will try to sway me, and they will think that everything is not okay with me. You have to go do something and hang out with them, go to church or I don't know something. But actually, not it. You know, you know what I mean. It's very powerful. You really have to think about this. Then you will find that this is very powerful. Yeah. Anyways, actually, this video is getting longer than I thought, so I will pause here, and I'll come back part two. I'll come back with part two, right now. How's that? Thank you so much. Stay tuned. Bye now.